any sponsor that uh, wishes to, to help us out this year um, will be considered our foundation sponsor, much like Jonathan, we give you some special consideration, maybe bump you up a level or two depending, depending on what it's like. So, uh, I'd like to introduce our final guest tonight, actually speaker of Ola. Um, he really needs no introduction, he recently took the helm of the ANU and really believes in driving, uh, uh, building uh, a culture here at the ANU to, to uh, make some new student leaders and really uh, encourage that because he thinks, much like someone did this, in investing in young people and that's where we're going to have uh, the future of Australia, I think. So uh, everyone please welcome me in introducing the Honourable Nobel Laureate and Vice-Chancellor of the ANU, Professor Brian Schmidt. Thank you, everyone. Uh, this is the beginning of Reconciliation Week, and so I too would like to acknowledge and celebrate the first Australians on whose traditional lands we meet, the Ngunnawal people, <coughs> pay my respects to their elders past and present. There are good days and there are bad days of being Vice Chancellor, and I can say today has been a good day. Uh, and it's because of an event like this. Uh, you realize that a university is ultimately made up of the people, and the people who really drive change are the students. I look around at who's here tonight, and I look at my ability as Vice Chancellor to get this same group of people together on my own, and it hasn't happened before, but it's happened tonight. And the students did it. And to show you how I know the students did it, as I'm talking to Eleanor and saying, so what's going on here? And she says, I don't know, I didn't do anything, the students did it. And she, and I'm like, okay, well, I didn't do anything either, uh, because they truly have done this on their own. And that's because students have no fear. They do not know the limits of what is possible. And that's why they end up changing the world. So I am really pleased here uh, to be uh, inaugurating this ANU World Star uh, Solar Car Challenge Team Sol Invictus and trying to get down that 3,000 kilometer uh, drive. It's a huge challenge, but one that I know they will succeed at because they have the will, they have the skill, they have the determination. When I look at what ANU is good at, one of the things that we offer, as, as described by Eleanor, is a systems degree in engineering. And trying to do this is a systems project. It's hard. As a physicist, we always think we can do everything, but we know that we can't actually do systems. We work on the bits and the pieces and the whole thing falls apart. So we actually need engineers. And I see Matthew Collis, my, my, my simultaneously my boss and my employee <laughs> over there, uh, who has to deal with this when we build complex systems for telescopes all the time. ANU attracts some of the most diverse uh, geographic students across uh, any university in the world. We get the best and the brightest in this really unique, interesting program that we have. It's not a traditional engineering pro uh, program, but it's one that produces amazing graduates. Aiden Byrne, who is at the ARC and soon to be at University of Queensland, always says, Brian, do not underestimate what your students are like. They are some of the best students in the world, and they are. And that's why I know they're going to do so well here. They are going through and doing what I am trying to get the whole university to do. Work across boundaries. Work with industry. Think of things outside the box. And they've already done it on their own. Nine months. With almost no support from us as, as of yet. I'm trying to get the whole university to do this. And I keep on saying the way I'm going to do this is through the students. Because they're the ones who, as I say, don't know what the rules are. This seems sensible to them. And so that's why I'm so proud of you. So now down to business. Of course, you cannot just build a solar car with scraps of stuff lying around. Uh, and so we need to go through and have a program. And it's not a program just for 2017. I want them to think long, three, five, 10 years. Because we're competing with some of the best universities in the world here, you know? And we're not going to win the race in the first year unless you do something absolutely amazing, which I won't rule out, but I would say we have to have a long-term goal. And being part of the ground of a 
three, a five, a ten-year project. Well, that's what the problems of the world require. And let's think of what we're going to gain in this. We're going to gain a bunch of people who actually understand how to solve really hard problems with a long intergenerational handoff of the problems because you're a fifth year, which means I'm assuming you're graduating soon, <laughs> and you're going to have to hand off that to the next generation. When we look at things like climate change and energy problems, that's a multi-generational problem. We have to work with future generations. And so they're beginning to work on the problems for the future, and they're going to be very valuable for industry and for society. So that's what this is partially about. I'm one of the probably few people in the room who actually drives an electric car, and uh, we need to keep working on that technology because it's really expensive right now. It's kind of fun, I'll tell you that, but it's expensive. Uh, and, you know, the beginnings of those ideas are starting in building these cars, coming up with new ideas, making things efficient, cheap, cheap. Cheap. <laughs> Universities are good at being cheap. <laughs> so I am here to urge you to sponsor this team. The university is serious about this as well. So for the first $50,000 that we raise, we're going to multiply it by two. So two to one leverage of your money. And then for the next 100000 we will, or for the next 50000 we will match one to one. So your support will, you know, the university isn't just asking you to reach out, it's reaching into its own uh, pockets as well, because it truly believes in this. So, this is, to my mind, an iconic, an iconic event for ANU. It has brought together the community in a way that I have not yet seen before. I want this to be a regular event where we can celebrate things together. Not just what we do, but what industry does. And I will be making sure that the that the university is in there celebrating what industry does in the city as well, because it is a partnership. And we know that Canberra is always kind of, I guess, forgotten by the rest of the country, and yet we do more per capita than any other place <coughs> in the country. We have an immense wealth of uh, talent. We have the opportunity to work together in this project and other projects. This is deeply symbolic of what I want the ANU to be, what I want our students to be, and I have to admit, it's about as proud as I have been since being Vice Chancellor tonight. Thank you very much. Thanks for those very kind words, Brian. You're making me tear up a little. <laughs> And thanks to our other speakers as well, if I haven't mentioned that before. It's a great privilege to all have you here in the same room. Uh, nearly impossible, as Jonathan mentioned. Uh, but it's been, uh, you've been fundamental to our success or somewhere like that. <laughs> um, so, uh, let's get to the point why we're all here tonight. Um, and that is to fundamentally learn about Soul Invictus and meet the team. Uh, every student part of the team here, like I said, those 25 most prominent students involved with the team, are here tonight and they're keen to talk to you um, and I hope that you're keen to talk to them as well. Uh, to facilitate all these discussions we've split up the room into three key, er key areas. Uh, you have our technical team at the back, like I said, who just recently completed the conceptual design. You have a business team who will be hanging around sort of to the right here where we have expressions of interest uh, so that we can get in contact with you later. Um, and we have uh, the Students Association, who are interested in engaging with our uh, huge student network here at the ANU. Go talk to them. They'll also be selling uh, raffle tickets as well. So here's an interesting uh, initiative we thought we'd put out. So whoever wins the raffle tonight uh, will have the first drive of the solar-powered electric vehicle at its launch next year. Yeah, uh, right here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Speaking of comments. <laughs> oh, and how could I forget? Uh, food and drink are here too. Uh, thanks to Top Gun Catering. There's some really cool stuff here. Um, and while I've got this opportunity, uh, I've got everyone's attention right now. I just want to thank the entire team as well. You know, uh, being part of the ANU has been an incredible experience. And although I've been here five years, I think every year I'm here, it's just I just grow that little bit more. And there are so many things, so many opportunities here, so many things to do. 
Um, and being part of Storm Invictus has actually been my favourite thing of them all. Uh, the team here that you see here in AU Black T-shirts, they've done an incredible job organising tonight. I haven't done much, to be honest, but uh, they're really uh, who should be speaking tonight, and it's a great privilege to talk on behalf of all of you. Um, we've, one thing I'm particularly proud of is just the team culture we've been able to develop. Um, we've, I've started them young, so they're all second or third years, none of them are old like me. Um, we also have some old team members here as well who have since gone on to get some uh, awesome graduate opportunities. Um, so yeah, just I encourage you to speak to them, uh, get to know them because they are uh, the students here who will take us to the marathon that is the World Solo Challenge um, and cross the finishing line in 2017. Thank you very much. Please converse with each other. <laughs>